Welcome to my series of a hair care. This is our part 2 of the series. In the first video, we spoke about if you have a thyroid problem, how it can damage your hair. Besides thyroid, which all medical conditions can also cause a damage to the hair. So this is our part 2 wherein we are going to talk about the externally or outside the care which you need to take in order to maintain best of your hair health. Namaste, my name is Dr. Tanvi Mayur Patel. I am an endocrinologist, hormone specialist doctor from Mumbai, India. Now before I begin this video, one important information. If you want to watch this video in Hindi language, then on the i button and in the description box there is a link if you click on that link this video will be played in hindi language for you agar aap is video ko hindi bhasha mein dekhna chahte hai to upar i button pe aur niche description box mein ek link hai agar aap us link pe click karenge to is video ko aap hindi bhasha mein payenge see our hair is a very sensitive part of our body if there is anything which goes disturbed Internally or externally, the hair will start showing its result. So if you good hair, it indirectly means that you have a very good internal health as well as a, you are taking a good care of your health. Now, many people have asked me about my hair and what all care I take. So for that only, I have made this special video. So stay tuned with me. See, besides medical condition and hormonal condition, Another very common reason for hair fall is a scalp infection or dandruff or a itchiness in the scalp. And this mainly happens if your hair is not maintained well and it is not very hygiene. So the hair hygiene is very important. Now when we talk about the hair hygiene and hair cleanliness, the one of the most important step for that is the hair wash. When you wash your hair, you are going to remove this excess of an oil and all the dirt in your grams which is collected in your scalp skin. So hair wash is very important. So how frequently you have to wash your hair? So this depends on the type of your hair. So if you have a very oily scalp and oily hair, in that case maybe a daily basis hair wash is recommended. And when you are having a daily wash recommended, then in that case you can use a very mild shampoo. If you have a color treated hair or if you dry and a brittle hair, in that case, maybe an alternate day or every third day you can wash your hair. As we age, the oil production from our scalp also reduces. So if you are an older person, then again you can wash your hair probably every alternate day. So when you wash your hair, you are maintaining a good hair hygiene. So now the after we talk about the hair wash, how are we going to wash your hair? For that, we are going to use a very special detergent and that's nothing but a shampoo. Yes. So what kind of a shampoo you have to choose? This is a very common question asked by plenty many viewers and also patients who come and visit me in my clinic. Well, the shampoo what you choose again depends on your hair type. I have selected a few important shampoos and hair products which are medically recommended and for that I have left the link in the description box. So if you want you can purchase from that link so that you can have a good hair health. So the shampoo type depends on your hair type. Many people think that if the shampoos are very very expensive they will be very good and a cheaper shampoos will not be good. It's not that way. Many a times the Indian make products are comparatively cheaper compared to the international products but as well as they are equally effective. If your hair has a lot of dandruff, in that case you will have to take a shampoo which has like medical chemicals like ketoconazole, salicylic acid. So they will ensure that the, all the flakes which is there get removed as well as it will also help in reducing the oil production from your scalp. If you have a very weak hair which is very easy to break, in that case when you buy a shampoo make sure that it has a good amount of protein because protein is very important for your hair health. Then if you have a dry and a damaged hair, in that case you will have to buy a shampoo which contains a good amount of conditioning effect and that is usually found in oils. So make sure that the shampoo mentions 
coconut oil or a moroccan oil or argan oil avocado oil so these are all all kind of a shampoo contain some amount of oil so they will also have a conditioning effect also you can use a two in one shampoo which not only does a job of a shampoo but also does a job of a conditioning if you have a color treated hair or if you have colored your hair then you have to buy a shampoo which is exclusively available for the color treated hair so all these are the different kind of a shampoos which you can buy based on your hair type now when we talk about the shampooing your hair one important point which you need to keep in mind that these shampoos should not contain a harmful chemicals and these harmful chemicals are mostly like a phthalate then we have a paraben and then there's one more chemical called as sls that is sodium lauryl sulfate so make sure that the shampoo mentions that this shampoo is sls or a paraben or phthalate free those shampoos are good for your scalp skin now when you shampoo your hair again the quantity of the shampoo is also very important many people have a tendency to take lot of shampoo and put them all over their hair please don't do that take a small coin size shampoo and put it in your hair now when you are going to shampoo your hair ideally it is recommended that you do a good scalp massage either that can be in the form of a oil massage so probably you can do a oil massage the previous night or maybe one hour prior to the shampooing if that is not feasible for you then when actually you are going to apply the shampoo make sure that you good massage to your scalp so that your shampoo has its best effect in a cleaning your scalp skin secondly when you are after applying the shampoo make sure that when you wash your hair you need to wash it thoroughly so that all the excess of the shampoo gets cleared off very well many people have a habit of rubbing lot of shampoo over the length of the hair don't do that unless and until you have a very oily chef uh, oily shaft of your hair length or else if you have done a lot of oiling again when you're going to rinse your hair again at that time you have to make sure that you rinse it thoroughly so that all the shampoo remnants gets cleared after shampoo one important step is the conditioning now the conditioning is especially very important if you have a dry unmanaged and brittle hair in that case you have to use a conditioner now the conditioner is also very very important when you are use a conditioner make sure that the conditioner has to be applied over your length of your hair and especially on the tip of your hair many people have a habit of applying conditioner on the scalp skin and the roots of the hair don't do that because conditioner doesn't work there so the conditioning will make sure that your hair remains smooth and shiny and they also protect your hair and this conditioner will also ensure that your hair does not catch up lot of knots so this precautions you need to take now you are going to take a bath at that time what kind of water you are going to use see the water is also very very important make sure that the water which you use should not be very hard water because that can have a bad effect on your hair many people love the warm water and a hot water shower i know hot water shower gives us a lot of relaxation but do you know that when you take a shower with a very hot steamy hot water it can damage your hair see our hair produces a very fine amount of the oil and this oil make sure that our hair maintains a good amount of a moisture and a shine when you take a shower with a very hot water all this excess of the oil gets dried up and that can cause lot of dry damaged hair so don't do that so what kind of a water temperature should be ideal cases it should be a room temperature or a lukewarm water is fine at the end when you finished taking your hair bath the final rinse has to be with the cold water so that your hair is protected very well now you have taken a bath now next point is about the drying your hair this is again a very very important many people think that the drying is what precautions we need to take so drying of the hair is again a very important step make sure that your hair dries by the air that means air drying is ideally recommended after you wash your hair remove all the excess of the water if you want you can wrap a towel around the length of your hair so all the excess water is dried up 
and please don't make a mistake of using a towel see most of the time towel has a very harsh uh, uh, fabric and when you rub that with your hair it can damage your hair so what to do you can use maybe an old t-shirt which is made up of cotton or any cotton fabric and you can just wipe your hands slowly and dry it up or else the best is you can use a air drying method now many people use a blow drying also now see when you are using a blow drying ideally cases it is not recommended on a regular basis but if you have to attend any function or a party at that time you can use a blow drying so limit usage of the blow drying as much as possible but if at all you have to use a blow dryer then in that case couple of tips which you need to keep in mind first always keep the temperature of the blow dryer as minimum as possible so that it damage caused by the heat is less secondly use a blow dryer little farther distance from your hair length so that the damage of the heated air does not happen many people have a habit of using a brush while drying with the blow dryer so at that time if you are using any kind of a brush make sure that you use the brush in the same direction as or that of the blow drying and never blow dry your hair from the tip to your roots always blow it dry from the roots to the hair that means you have to go from upside to downward now so when you are going to use a blow drying there are certain kind of a heat protecting chemicals and sprays are available which you can use so that the damage caused by these uh, styling products is minimum many people use a hair ironing or a hair curler again at that time keep the same points in mind use a lowest temperature possible use that product for as minimum time as possible do not keep this styling products contact with your hair for a long period of time and use them sparingly and use a heat protecting agents now is time for brushing your hair what tips to keep in mind never brush your hair when it is wet always let your hair dry first and then brush it because when your hair is wet it is in fact three times weaker and easy to break that's the reason why we advise never brush your hair when it is wet now for the brushing what kind of a tools you use that's also very important so if you are a user of a hair brush then make sure that this hair brush has to have a wooden bristles and the tip of this bristles has to be ball point try to avoid plastic brushes because when you use a plastic brush they are little harmful to your hair shaft and your hair length of your hair also when you use a plastic brushes there is a high chance of a static to your hair so that's the reason why a wooden brushes are advisable and if you are user of a comb then in that case you have to use a wide toothed comb so that it becomes easy for you to brush now many people have a problem of what tangling in their uh, hair and uh, gets knotty hair in that case you can use a detangler so that you remove all the knots and the tangles and then you can brush your hair properly many times people think that we have to brush nearly 90 to 100 times so that we get the best hair health that's actually a myth try to avoid that and try not to over brush your hair so these are the few points which you need to keep in mind now another important point for the people who have a dandruff many times many people confuse dandruff with that of a dry scalp and to that many people try doing lot of oil massages please don't do that in fact dandruff is actually it's a scalp fungal infection so if you are going to oil it you are actually going to increase your problem so if you are having a dandruff you can use a certain medicated shampoos now these medicated shampoo should contain antifungal ingredient like ketoconazole and a salicylic acid so all of these they try to reduce the fungal infection and they also reduce the oil content from your scalp which can further increase your problem and still after using this if your dandruff problem is not resolved then in that case you need to speak to your dermatologist or who are the hair specialist like a trichologist doctors also so this point to be kept in mind for a people who have a dandruff 
Now let's talk about the taking care of your hair with due to sun. Now many people are exposed to sun, especially people who travel a lot, maybe on a bike or by a public transport. Or many a times when you travel like that, not only the harsh sun rays damage your hair, but also the various pollutants, they also cause a lot of damage to your hair. So how you have to take care? So first of all, if you are going to travel like that, you can use certain tips like we have a uh, sunscreen protecting for our skin. Similarly, nowadays we have a hair sprays which are actually sun protecting. You can use such a sun protecting hair sprays, especially that should contain a chemical like a zinc oxide. Another tip you can do is that when you go in a sunlight, you can just tie your hair and then you can cover your hair, probably with a cotton cloth or maybe if you are a woman, you can wear a hat. And if you are a man, you can wear a cap. So that's where you are reducing the sun exposure. Especially when you use a hat, it works many ways. First of all, it gives you a new look to your entire wardrobe. Secondly, if your hair is a very oily and if you not washed properly, that can also be covered up. And yes, it is not only going to cover your hair, but also going to cover your facial skin because most of the hats have a wider brim. So these are the certain hair care tips due to sun exposure so that you can have a better health. Now we talk about the scalp care. See, scalp care is very, very important. Scalp skin is nothing but an extension of our facial skin. We do take care of our facial skin, isn't it? We wash it, then we scrub it. Similarly, we also have to take care of our scalp skin. Once in a 15 to 30 days, you should ideally exfoliate and use a mild scrub for your scalp skin. When you use such a mild and a gentle scrub, it removes all the excess of oil or any dirt or any grimes. And from the previous usage, if there is any shampoo or a conditioner, or any other hair product which is left, that also will be cleared off. So scalp care is also very important. In a major cities, people use a dry shampoo. Now dry shampoos are used by those people who due to shortage of a time, they can't take care of their hair every day, they can't wash it or they have an excess of oil production in their hair. So people use a dry shampoo. The advantage of the dry shampoo is that you did not wash it and you can use it on the go. So if you are a user of a dry shampoo, of course you can use it to reduce the oiliness and that oiliness can give a lot of other health issues. So you can use a dry shampoo. Another important point for scalp care is the usage of deep conditioning. See, no matter how day-to-day -day basis we use a conditioner or a two-in-one shampoo, a deep conditioning of your scalp is ideally recommended. So you should do deep conditioning once in 15 to 30 days, again depends on your hair type. And nowadays we get a lot of hair pack which you can use for the deep conditioning. And many people use a many homemade hair pack also, you can use that also for the deep conditioning. Another important point for the scalp care is a hydration. Hydration is a very, very important. Whether we talk about for our skin or for our hair, hydration is utmost important. So when your hair is a well hydrated, it has a different kind of a shine, it has a different kind of a smoothness. And to add the hair hydration, you can use a various kind of a hair serums or hair cream which will add up to the shine and the smoothness and immediately you'll see that your hair has a different kind of a health. Another important point is the hair coloring. See many people use a hair coloring. People who are older generation, they use a hair coloring to cover their grays. And the people who are young generation, they want to look more funky, more stylish and more in fashion and they use a various kind of a hair color. In fact, the younger generation use a very dramatic colors. I have seen people you having a green, blue, red hair also. So when you are going to use such an extreme hair color, it is going to damage to your hair maximum. You may not realize immediately, but in later in the future, you will start seeing the harmful effects of these hair color. When you use a hair color, make sure these hair color should not contain a chemicals like ammonia and phthalate. These chemicals are very harmful. If at all you want to color your hair, use a natural color as much as possible. Now when we talk about the natural color, we have a henna that's a mehndi in India and an indigo powder which is a very good a natural hair color. 
by the way in the description box i have left a link for a best natural hair color you can use that if you have a graying of a hair if at all you want to color your hair make sure that you select a color which is three shades lighter or a darker than your actual natural color so that the damage is little less try to avoid extreme hair coloring changes and if you are doing a hair coloring on a frequent basis and wherein you need to use a root touch-ups, try to delay the root touch-ups as much as possible. And especially if your weather is a dry, like in the winter condition, then in that case, you need to minimum keep a gap of two to three months for the coloring and the touch-ups. Because more you color your hair, there is a higher chances that your hair will become dry. At the same time, as we age, our hair also ages and our hair becomes weaker and more vulnerable. So if you are an older person and if you are going to do hair coloring frequently, then again it can cause a lot of damage. Especially in a women when they go through the menopause and at that time also there is a lot of hormone shift. And at that time if you use an extreme hair coloring that can again probably cause a lot of damage so please keep that point also in mind another is a salon services many people go for coloring hair smoothening hair relaxing and hair bonding and many other kind of a hair services so if you are going to do any kind of a such services make sure that you use only one service at a time don't go for all the chemical treatments at one go Please remember, more the chemical treatment, the more the chances of a damage. So keep one salon service at a time. And after one salon service, keep a minimum gap of a two weeks to four weeks so that you give enough time for your hair to recover and rest well. Now, let's talk about the care of a split ends. No matter how much we care of our hair, the split ends are inevitable. What to do about that? See, ideally in every three to six months, you should trim your hair so that all the excess of the split ends gets removed. Okay. Otherwise, what you can do is you can use a conditioner and a, pro and a shampoo which contains high amount of a protein. See, our hair is made up of a keratin protein. So, if you give a good amount of a protein to your split ends, there is a high chances that they will recover. However, this recovery is only for a short period of time. So that's the reason why we always advise that you cut your that excess of your hair which has a split ends. Any which way at the end of our uh, hair, the tips of our hair is a dead. So if you trim that, in fact, you are going to improve your hair appearance and your hair health. Now let's talk about hair styling. Yes, certain hair styling mistakes which you should avoid. Many people have a habit of tying a very tight hairstyles like a tight ponytail or a braids or a tight buns. If you are going to do that, then you are actually pulling your hair from the root and that can cause a traction hair fall, what we call it as a traction alopecia. So don't use such a hairstyle. If at all you want to use such hairstyle, make sure that ponytail is a little, little uh, lower and your buns are not very tight. Again, what kind of a rubber band to use, that's also very important. At the end of the braid, if you use a very elasticated plastic kind of a rubber band, they will continuously pull on your hair and will cause a damage. So what to do? At that time, you can use a hair band which has a covering, probably a covering of a cotton or maybe a velvet or a fur or any kind of a cloth material so that it is gentle on your hair. When you use a hair clip, that's also very important. If you use a very cheap material, plastic hair clips, again, it can cause a lot of damage to your hair. So to avoid that, make sure that the hair clip what you use should have a very, very smooth texture so that it doesn't cause a damage to your hair. Now, many people use a hair extensions. So if you are one of that, certain tips you need to keep in mind. So first of all, make sure that you use a hair extensions not very tight and they also has to be a little loose. Don't use hair extension more than two to three months at one go. And when you have to frequently change your hair extension, ideally use a professional hair care services so that you don't make any mistake. Another mistake hair care extension users make is that they don't take care of their scalp. And if you don't take care of your scalp, you will have a lot of scalp related infection. So make sure that you take a good scalp care. 
try to use hair extension as minimum as possible and for that you can change your hairstyle so that you don't need to use hair extension very frequently another tip is that you can switch your part yes where we take a partition of our hair if you switch your part you will find that your entire look and the appearance change okay you will find that your roots gets a lifted up and you will see that there's a lot of volume to your hair so this tip also you can try now let's talk about the care of your hair when you swim yes many people go for swimming at that time what you have to do so first thing before you go for swimming always make sure that you take a bath and you take a hair bath you wet your hair properly why because when your hair is a wet it is not going to absorb more water so when you actually jump into a pool the pool water contains a lot of chemicals and one such is a chlorine so if your hair is a dry and if you directly jump in the pool lot of chlorine water will be absorbed by your hair but if you have taken a bath before and your hair is already moist the chlorine water absorption reduces and that will prevent the damage also when you actually use the pool you can use a swimming cap yes you can use swimming cap and that will prevent any chlorine water contact with your hair and once you have finished your usage of a swimming after that make sure that you don't forget to wash your hair properly especially nowadays there are uh, special kind of uh, shampoos which are available which is used after the usage of a swimming pool and use such shampoo and don't forget to condition your hair because conditioning the hair will prevent all the damage which has happened due to the chlorine so these are general tips which you can use for your hair health now let's talk about certain lifestyle changes which can help you in that the very first is a diet see there is a saying that we are what we eat and that applies very much to your hair health so make sure that your food contains a good amount of a protein see our hair is made up of a protein so when you have a good amount of protein of course it will result in a better hair health in ideal condition a person should use 1 g of a protein per kg of their body weight so if you are weighing around 50 kg you need around 50 g of a protein per day but unfortunately most of us are deficient of a protein so that's the reason why even our hair health gets compromised so what you can do you can include lot of protein rich foods and you can also include a protein supplements now in the description box i have left a link of a protein powder exclusively made for your hair which i personally also use for myself you can try that also so now that's about your diet also don't make a mistake of going on a crash diet many people in order to lose weight go on a lot of crash diet they starve themselves they go on a keto diet and when you are going to do that it can have a counter repercussion on your hair health so please don't make that mistake another tip in a dietary changes which you should do is that into lot of green leafy vegetables now these green leafy vegetables have lot of vitamins lot of biotin and lot of minerals which is important for your hair health so please include that make sure that any kind of a nutritional deficiencies if you have that also has to be covered especially people have a anemia problem and that is also one of the very common reason for the hair fall so check that you have a right balance of the ferritin and iron level and if not you can correct it second lifestyle change is the exercise yes exercise is also very important however don't overdo it when you do over exert yourself it can release lot of stress hormones and that can also cause a damage to your hair when you do exercise especially use a head stand exercise wherein your body position is inverted when you do such exercise there's a lot of blood flow happen to your head area and that will increase the blood supply to your scalp also and that will also be beneficial Another important tip is the hydration that's a water intake 6 to 8 glasses of a water is ideal not only for your skin but also for your hair health Another lifestyle measure is a sleep in a ideal situation one should sleep at least 6 to 8 hours a day and this sleep has to be that of the night time 
certain mistakes which you should avoid while sleeping. In that one mistake is that many people tie a braid or a tie a ponytail and go to sleep. And if you are going to do that, that can have a traction effect and can cause a hair fall. Another problem is that many people use a fabric of the pillow which is very harsh on their hair. Many people use a wool, many people use even cotton. See cotton otherwise is very breathable fabric. However, for your hair, you need a very smoother fabric to touch like that of a satin. So that also change you can do. Another tip is that of a take care of your stress. The more the stress, more the stress hormones and more the stress hormones, more the damage. So to reduce your stress, you can do yoga, you can do meditation, you can do pranayam. Another important tip is that take care of your hormones. Yes, hormones are very, very important and they are very potent and powerful chemicals which can create havoc of your hair. No matter if you take every good possible care of your hair, but still if you have a hormonal health issue, you can have a hair problem. So make sure that your thyroid hormone, your estrogen, your progesterone, your prolactin, your insulin and a testosterone and a DHT hormone has to be in a balance. If these hormones are going to be disturbed, you will have a hair issue. Another tip is that avoid any kind of addiction, whether it is an addiction of that of a coffee or a tea or a smoking or alcohol. All these caffeine containing items can have a detrimental effect on your hair. So reduce caffeine intake and smoking as much as possible. So these are the certain tips which we discussed today in our today's topic about the externally taking care of your hair. If you found some good useful information after watching this video, please click on the like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so that you will get more and more health related, especially hormones related information. And if you have any of your personal doubt, you can leave your question in the comment box. I try to read all your comments as early as I can and reply to them also. Thank you for joining me till now and we will meet again in some new interesting topic. Till then, take care of yourself and take care of your beautiful hair. Namaste.